it automatically made your consistency easy for you. It didn't make it hard anymore. You just have to do it, you don't think twice about it. Somebody says to you, how do you do it man? I just gotta do it. I don't think about it, I just do it. That's it. Now if we really, really believed, like we believe our, we will lose our job when we don't show up on time, right? If we really, really believed that we are heading for loss, and there are certain behaviors that need to enter into our life, like the regularity of salah, for example, like the abandonment of vain activity, for example, if we were really convinced that not changing our behavior will lead us to loss, like the loss of a job, Right, like, you know, nobody's gonna be late for their immigration appointment. They're gonna be there two hours early. Right, they're gonna prepare the night, they have Qiyam al-Layl the night before, because it's at 6 a.m., so they won't go to sleep. They'll be there early. Because they are convinced this has to do with, if they don't do this, they will be in loss. If we are truly convinced this will lead to loss, then changing one day, rather changing your whole life becomes very easy. But when does it become easy? When there is belief. Which is why when Allah talked about khusr, what's the first exception He mentioned? Those who what? They believe. It is not just casually, oh those who believe, yeah, I'm included. No, no, no. This is not the kind of belief we're talking about here. This is real deep conviction that what I am doing is directly connected to my success, directly connected to my failure. I better change my ways. I better get my act together. This is, this is just in the word al-asr itself. Just in the word, how it's being squeezed and drenched away, and I don't have time. The students, those of you that are students here, you have an assignment due, and you forgot to do it. There's time running out, right? The kind of urgency you will see in a student, the kind of urgency to study for the exam before the final, the kind of urgency you will see for an accountant in tax season, the kind of urgency you will see, for example, if you're late to work, the kind of behavior you will have at home, things will be upside down, you better not be late. You're gonna turn the whole house up, nothing matters at that time. You won't care about breakfast or this or that or the other, you will go. Because there's a sense of urgency, you are convinced you will be in trouble if you don't do it. You're absolutely convinced. We have to compare that conviction to our conviction in, in terms of our deen. And our conviction, you know, if your boss says to you, I swear to you, you are in trouble. If your boss says that to you, he says, I swear, he comes into the office, he doesn't point at you. He says, every single employee is in trouble. I swear. Every single one. They're gonna, they're gonna lose big. When he walks away, do you think any of the employees is there? Ah, not me. <laughs> I'm okay. Nope. He didn't specify, right? He didn't say some people are in trouble. He didn't say that guy over there is in trouble. What did he say? Every single one. You're all in trouble. And you're gonna find out pretty soon. Time's running out. There's a deadline, you're, you're gonna find out very very soon who, you know, how much trouble you're really in. Now when you hear that, in dunya there's a sense of urgency. There's, oh my God, what am I, what am I supposed to do? What does he want? Why is he angry? What, what, is it something we're not doing? Now think about this, when you get a job, and I'm giving you these examples so we understand the rest of the surah well, inshaAllah ta'ala. This is a critical surah for the life of a Muslim. It is such a gift from Allah that He gave us three ayat that can change our life. You don't have to memorize Qur'an to change your life. Just remember Surah Al-Asr, man, subhanAllah, how it will transform your life. How it will transform your life. Now, now think about this. You get a job. Your boss says to you, you got four tasks. Every day, you have how many? Four tasks. Sometimes your boss gives you tasks that you're really good at. And sometimes you have tasks that you don't like doing. But because this is your job, how many tasks do you have to do? All four. You only like two of them, but you still have to do four. Two of them you enjoy doing, two of them you don't enjoy doing, but you still do four. Now if some of, the, some of you decide, or I decide, I'm just gonna do two of those. Because I'm really good at those two. I'm not gonna even touch the other two, I'm not worried about that. He'll be okay, when he sees how impressive my first two are, he'll forget about the other two. So you don't do the other two tasks. And the boss comes after a week, so what's, uh, what's the story? Where, where are you on the progress? I finished the first two hundred percent. Oh, what about the other? Actually, I, um, I'm not gonna do those. But see how good I did the first two. What's gonna happen to this person? What do you think is gonna happen? He's gonna keep his job? No. Even if you did not, a, not the best job, but at least you did your best to, for all four. You didn't get a hundred percent. You got a seventy percent for all four. That's better than you getting a hundred percent for one of them. You understand? So when Allah sets out four conditions, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا 
وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر and we say iman yeah we should work on our iman some good deeds and you say ah, this other stuff this is for speakers this is for dai this is for the shaykh this is for somebody this is not for me this is for somebody else then what are you doing you're saying allah says those everyone's in trouble except people who meet four conditions but you're only interested in two or one or three or whatever you're picking and choosing that is also in loss it's all or nothing it's all or nothing. That's the attitude we have to develop in regards to this surah. I'll take 10 more minutes inshallah ta'ala. We'll probably have to have a third session about surah al-asr. Inshallah. That was my, my fear originally was three sessions on surah al-asr. Wallillahi alhamd. Okay. Let's get to inna al-insana lafi khusr. First of all, the word inna. Inna is used in the Arabic language, uh, not just to mean certainly, but to talk to a group of people that are in doubt about what you are saying. By using the word inna in inna al-insana lafi khusr, we are already learning that most human beings, when they hear this, guess what? They don't believe it. They don't believe it's that, it's that bad. It can't be that bad, bro. That's a pretty depressing lecture you gave. It can't be that bad. And Allah is making sure you understand, for sure this is the case. Inna. Rhetorically, it's used izalat al-shak. It is used to remove doubt. And by saying that, I say the doubt already exists. The doubt already exists. And you would think this is talking to Al-Kafir. Some Mufassirun said, Al-Insan ay Al-Kafir. But then other Mufassirun came with even stronger dalil against that. Why? Because Al-Istithna at the end, Illa, with the exception. Because Allah put exception, it's all humanity. If it was Al-Kafir, then there wouldn't be an exception to the Kafir. Kafir is Kafir. But because it's illa at the end, this is referring to each and every single human being. Now let's talk about the word insan quickly. The word insan, we've talked about this before because it's come up many times in different surahs. The word insan comes from different roots, it's argued. One of them is nisyan, forgetfulness. And part of that is the human being can be reminded that he's in really, really deep trouble, but what happens soon after? He forgets. You hear a khutbah, you get reminded. You remember and you say, man, seriously, I gotta get my act together. And then you, by the time you get to the car in the parking lot of the masjid, you've already forgotten. Insan. Human beings, Allah gave him a covenant before he even came to this earth. Alastu bi rabbikum, qalu bala shahidna in surah al-a'raf. He said, am I not your master? We said, yes, of course you are. We bear witness. We bear witness to Allah that He's our master when He came to this earth. Guess what happened? We forgot. We forgot. We forget the seriousness of saying La ilaha illallah. We forget the power of saying Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We forget. So the word insan, as opposed to al-fard, the individual, and nafs, the person. There are different words that are alternatives. Al-bashar, the, the you know, people, al-nas. But al-insan here, two benefits of it. One, to allude to our forgetfulness. And two, the word insan is individual, it's called ism lil jins. The benefit of knowing that is, this word includes two things. It includes all categories, meaning all human beings, and at the same time it's singular. And here we have to learn something, this is the last thing we'll share for today inshallah ta'ala, just a little bit about the word insan, is the concept of the diffusion of responsibility. This is a concept in psychology, it's called diffusion of responsibility. All of you are here. Uh, let, let me give you a classroom example or a home example. My kids are at home. I have five kids, alhamdulillah. They're, they're home, they're running around. As I'm leaving the, the house, I say to them, be good, and I close the door. I just say, be good. Are they gonna be good? No. This is what you call diffusion of responsibility. But if I open the door and I say, Husna, don't bother your sister. Waliya, don't draw on the wall. Huda, don't yell. Imad, go to sleep. If I specify, then are they going to be more responsible? Yes. If I say generally, then what happens? It must be talking about someone else, I'm already good. You understand? The teacher says, in the classroom, the, the kids are making lots of noise. The teacher says, be quiet everyone. Does it work? But the teacher takes one student and makes an example out of them. Everybody's making noise. This is, by the way, for teachers, this is a good tip. Okay. Everybody's making noise. You sing a lot one student. Kareem, you want to keep talking? Just one. Guess what's going to happen to everybody else? 
Everybody chills out. Why? You specify. There's no more diffusion of responsibility. It, it didn't get di you know, divided up. And a lot of times when people are given a responsibility, they start assuming, yeah, it's important, but there's always someone else who can do it. Right? Yeah, there's trouble. You know, the, t the teacher walks in, you know, you guys are in big trouble. But the teacher says, you guys are in big trouble. Not that scary. I pick on Kareem again, Kareem, you don't know how much trouble you're in. Is that far more scarier for Kareem? It is, isn't it? Now to say, إِنَّ النَّاسَ لَفِي خُسْرَ People are in trouble, people are in loss, that's one thing. إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ Each and every single individual forgetful human being is immersed in a state of loss. So when the human being hears this ayah, who is he to think about? Himself. Forget everybody else. Forget, forget everybody else. It's just, I am in trouble. I shouldn't think about anybody else right now, I should only be thinking about myself. When it comes to our salvation, being saved on the day of judgment, there is no charity. On that day, the mother doesn't care about the child. The mother doesn't care about the child. With the exception of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the people, the, the prophets alayhi wa sallam are saying, we can't make shifa for you, shifa for you. Go someone else. I have no, nothing to give you. That is the day when brother is running from brother. Best friends are no longer best friends. وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ يَوْمَ يَفَرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ On that day, you love your family so much. And by the way, we sometimes out of love of people, we do really bad things. Right? We do really, really bad things. And those same people, the, the person who's about to be thrown in hellfire on the Day of Judgment, he says, وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ يُنْجِيهِ He says to Allah Azza wa Jal, لَوْ يَفْتَدِي بِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِئِذِمْ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَخِي Can I be saved from the punishment in exchange for my son? Can you throw my son, my baby, can you throw him in hell instead of me? That's what the guy will say. And my wife, and my brother, And my mother, wa ummi, wa abihi, wa fasilati, and his extended family. Wa man fil ardi jamiyan. He will look at all humanity and say, Oh Allah, you're about to throw me. Why don't you take all of them instead? All of them. Just let me let me be saved. Thumma yunjihi that he should be saved. Subhanallah. That is the state of affairs. Now think about that. This day, on that day, you'll forget everyone. So what we're learning here is this is the time to forget everyone first. You should be concerned about them. Second, who should you be concerned about first? Yourself. I say this with all sincerity and goodwill at heart to the parents of Muslim children. We are so worried about our children, we're not too worried about ourselves. Ah, my kids gotta go to an Islamic school. We gotta make sure that they are in a good environment. What about your good environment? Why are you watching the, that stuff? Why are you talking like that? Why are you cheating in business? Why aren't you getting up for salah? We, we remember those we love? And we forget who our own selves, subhanAllah. Can you talk to this? Can you talk to that? You know, they'll come to the shaykh, the imam. Can you talk to my, my kids? They need some advice. You don't need advice? Really? Because I would think if you messed up in raising your kid, the first person who needs advice is you. What happened all these years? Where have you been? Where's the, where's the parent been who's supposed to do his job? SubhanAllah. So, inna al-insan, bringing responsibility to ourselves, the state of emergency, the fact that we are not safe, from loss. We're not even discussing loss yet, that's later on in the ayah. We're just at in al-insan. And I think this is, it suffice to conclude here inshaAllah ta'ala as, as far as today's dars. And bi next Tuesday we'll try and wrap up the dars on Surah Al-Asr. But in al-insan ala fi khus, no doubt each and every single human being, as forgetful as they are, are deeply immersed in loss. And as they realize that, they should also realize that Allah has already sworn, time is running out. Time for them to change their behavior is running out. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us internalize the lessons from Surah Al-Asr. May Allah Azza wa Jal embed these lessons onto our hearts that we may constantly remember them. May Allah make us like the Sahaba who whenever they met each other, they wouldn't part each other. لم يتفرق حتى يقرأ You know, they, they wouldn't leave each other's company until they would recite to each other, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَ